Hey, it's Brett, and you're watching Brett and Some Books. Um, it's been a long time since I've read anything on here. Um, lost my phone for a while, so the the one that I record on. And I've also been working a lot. I work at a factory now. Um, so hopefully after some of these uh, good checks, I can buy a better setup than my cell phone. Um, today we're going to start The Cricket in Times Square by George Selden. Um, and it uh, was one of my favorite books when I was in elementary school. I haven't thought about it in forever, um, but I remember it being really great and I hope you enjoy it too. The foreword by Stacy Lee is, For over 60 years, the cricket in Times Square has enthralled children with its timeless tale of a busy, business-savvy mouse and a kind alley cat who help a country cricket adapt to his new home in the New York City subway. With its themes of friendship and belonging, eight-year-old me devoured this story each chapter bringing new complications as Mario tries to convince his parents, owners of a newspaper stand, to let him keep Chester Cricket as a pet. What would become of Chester after he accidentally eats the family's $2 bill? And could he win over Mario's grumpy mother with his music? As the only Chinese kid for miles and miles who never felt like I belonged anywhere, I felt a special connection with this lost Cricket, especially since like Chester, I could also play music by ear. One thing always stood out to me, and that was George Selden's inclusion of two Chinese men in the story, one of whom sells Mario a cricket cage. When I read it as a child, I was thrilled to see Chinese people in a book. In my limited world view, I simply accepted that the author's depiction of these men must be right but stereotypes have a tricky way of reinforcing themselves, leaving fingerprints in the soft parts of a child's mind that, the more often they are pressed in, calcify into permanent marks. Today's young readers are socially minded, independent thinkers, and we are counting on them to shape a more equitable future for all. Thanks to the generosity of George Selden's estate, we have an opportunity to redress some of the issues of representation we believe will make this story more in step with times. To that end, we've taken out the broken accents and the bowing, and we've created authentic characters for Chester and his friends to meet. This version of The Cricket in Times Square is the same story we all know and love, with a few small but mighty changes. May it invite readers into Chester's world for 60 more years to come. Chapter 1. Tucker. A mouse was looking at Mario. The mouse's name was Tucker. And we'll continue on the next video.